Scott Weichel, you're listening to My Kind of Country here on Fish Creek Radio. This gentleman was a member of the Statler Brothers and has been inducted into the Gospel Music Association Hall of Fame and the Country Music Association Hall of Fame. He has won numerous awards, and he has been doing his own solo career ever since uh, the Statler Brothers retired, but he certainly is still going strong and uh, has a great album out, and we're here to talk with him today. This is Jimmy Fortune. Hey, Scott. Good talking to you, buddy. Oh, it's an honor to have you on the show. My goodness. <laughs> well, it, it's uh, it's been a busy uh, few years. Of course, it's been 2002 since the Stout Brothers retired, so I've been doing this now for 13 years almost. So. Wow. That's... It's, uh, it's, uh, it, but, it's, you know, it's been great, though. It really has to have had the career I had with the Statler Brothers, uh, some of the greatest guys to ever walk on stage, and uh, and great entertainers and as well. But, uh, you know, to be on my own and still going around the country and seeing everybody and getting to say uh, hello and thank you all over again to, to everybody who supported the Statler Brothers for so many years and now are coming out to support me. It's just been a great, great time for me. It really has. Well, that's wonderful. You know, you've had a uh, you've had a tremendous career um, just on your own. These wonderful albums you've had out, uh, and then I really like the album title of your, of your first solo album, "When One Door Closes." That's very very appropriate. Yeah, I get asked about that. Some somebody said, "Well, why not? Why didn't you call it when one door opens?" I said, "Well, because at that time I hadn't even started anything. I just had the title, and the title was it was like." A message from God, you know, one door when one door closes because uh, the door was closing actually at that time, and uh, so uh, the door that has opened is the door is the door that I'm in right now that is still open, and and uh, and uh, so I suppose one of these days another door another door opened and I stepped through, and this is another whole phase of my life, you know. Sure. Well, you certainly have written a lot of wonderful songs, and of course you wrote many for the Statler Brothers, including uh, my very favorite, Elizabeth. And I have to tell you, the uh, solo version that you did on your album of Elizabeth is just breathtaking. You have one of the most pure tenor voices I've ever heard. Well, I appreciate you saying that. Uh, it's funny you said that. I just got sent uh, some young kid that's a really great singer uh, uh, contacted me and sent me a recording of Elizabeth and he did it and he did a kind of a new version of it it's kind of a I don't even know how to explain what style it is but it was really really good this kid could sing oh my gosh he had a beautiful voice and uh, the way he sang Elizabeth and and everything and it was just all new again to me and when I heard it and I was like wow so uh, I guess when you create something and it and it's a living it's like it's a living a thing, you know, it's like its own entity, and and Elizabeth still lives on, and these young kids are recording it now. So I'm hearing hearing uh, different recordings of it, and hearing different people sing it, and it's just been a awesome experience to see that that song still affects people, and the melody, the and the words still touch people. It's a beautiful song. How did you come to write that? Well, uh, <clears throat> I never had written a song before. Uh, I'd been with the Statler Brothers for for a few months. And I remember going to Harold Phil and Don saying, "Well, guys, if I if I write a song, would you guys record it?" And uh, and Harold looked at me and he said, "Well, yeah, little buddy, if it's good enough, you know." And his deep voice, you know. <laughs> and I thought that was fair, so I went uh, uh, back to the hotel. This is why I know there's a God because I, there's no other place this song could have come from because uh, I uh, had this melody in my head that kind of been I'd been playing with, you know, for a few weeks and. And so the melody was there, and I knew that it really uh, lent itself to harmony, uh -huh. that the harmonies would be beautiful with this melody. And uh, so uh, I said, all I need is to get some words to put with this, you know. And I kept hearing that name over and over again. Everywhere I'd go, i hear Elizabeth here, Elizabeth there. And then we watched the movie Giant with Elizabeth Taylor, which I never had seen before. The Statler Brothers kind of introduced me to that. Uh -huh. And uh, that was on the way to Tulsa, Oklahoma, to do a show. Uh, one day, and then that night we got there, and uh, while I was playing on stage, this beautiful young lady comes up out of the audience and says, grabs me by the hand and wouldn't let go, and she said, I'm Elizabeth, I'm Elizabeth, and I mean, she was so pretty, and her, I remember her eyes, and I said, you know what, I think, 
I need to put this name in this song. And so I did. I took it back to them the next morning and uh, played it for them. And they said, that's going to be on our first album with you. And it was. And it was the third single release off of that album. And went number one. And I won Song of the Year. And it won Song of the Year uh, in 1985. Wow. So for uh, Elizabeth. And uh, so, I, I, like I said, I, that, that's why I know it, God had his hand in all that. I, it was like... Uh, he knew that I needed a song, and he knew the Stout Brothers needed a song, so he, he gave it to me. So that's the only, the only way I know to explain that, you know. Man, that's awesome. You know, a good song just never goes away, and it's, uh, you know, they never get old, and they're, they're always, uh, they have this life of their own, you know. Yep, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. They, they stand the test of time. Absolutely, and that, that is a beautiful song. It really is, and I just... It, touches me too and i actually you know when i heard you do it do the solo version it gave it a whole new meaning for me because i you know obviously listened to the statler brothers and then to hear your different approach on it it was like wow and that you know it kind of gave me more of a feel of the essence of the song because it's the gentleman that wrote it was the one singing it you know just doing it by right, himself right. so well i remember when i when i wrote it uh as well as a solo artist you have to treat things different than you do if you're in a group you know usually group singing is so much different because it's uh, more uh, attention is just kind of put into the harmonies and, and the structure of the song and the way it flows. But when you're a solo, you can kind of put more of your emotion into it, I think. Um, and the emotion comes out in a song more, and especially if you wrote it, you know what I'm saying? It's like you you uh, having, having a... Uh, connection with that song emotionally so mm -hmm. i think if that's why it comes off sometimes that where it's a whole different feel sure absolutely well my uh i have a son who's now 20 years old and i have a daughter who's nine years old and she is now listening to flowers on the wall and that's one of her favorite songs and when my son was that age he was also listening to flowers on the wall i guess i guess kids must gravitate toward that song <laughs> They they love it. I, I still do it. Matter of fact, I open my shows with it because uh, I do a little tribute. I tell people how the Statlers are doing and just kind of fill them in on what's going on. But even though they've been retired for 13 years, I, people like to know how they're doing, and I don't want them to ever forget uh, about the Statler brothers. So I'm always going to be a strong advocate for some guys who gave me a big break. You know, I'll never forget that. That's wonderful. And uh, so I do. I start my shows off with that song, and you'll see little kids that are out there. Their little faces will light up, and they get the eyeballs will get real big when you, as soon as you hit that first part of that song, they love it. You're yeah. right. Yeah, both of my kids. You know, even the you know the age difference, they both have gravitated towards that song. My son, when he was little, called it. Uh, I want to hear. He said, "I want to hear Deck of Fifty One." <laughs> Deck of Fifty One. I love that. Well, you know. Uh, of course, it was in that movie Pulp Fiction, but I don't think anybody wants their kids to watch it. But anyway, no. But it was big in that movie too. It hits so many generations, and like you, as you said, it song has a life of its own, and it's timeless. It really is. Yeah, Eric Heatherly did a real good version of it too. He kind of uh, did a little bit more up tempo, but it was really good. I loved Eric Heatherly's version of that song. I really did. Uh, matter of fact, when I play it, sometimes I I kind of put his feel in it a little bit as well. Yeah, he did a good job on it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, how are the Statler oh, brothers doing, if you don't mind me asking? They are they are doing well. Um, uh, I talk to them quite often. As a matter of fact, I was just on the phone with them yesterday talking and uh, try to keep up with them. Uh, Phil, uh, he, his wife passed away back around Christmas time this past oh, year. Sorry to hear that. And we miss her very much because she was such a such a wonderful wonderful person and um and still can't believe that she's gone but um i went up and we spent some time together you know during that time and of course we reminisce every time we get together and talk about uh you know being on stage and doing shows the people that we met and the memories that we made so um you know it's always good talking with them but uh but they're doing pretty good and I and I always appreciate people asking about them because, like I said, I don't ever want them to forget to forget about them. I can tell you that. Well, it sounds like you guys had a real uh, bond over the years, and that's and you've maintained that, and I think that's wonderful. Yeah, 
I mean, I, I know that I was I was a bit younger when I came into the group, and for them to take on somebody who was, you know, 15, 16 years younger than they were, uh, I always thought that said a lot about them, you know, because it's not easy when you're in this business and all of a sudden, you know, these young guys come along and all of a sudden they start getting all the attention and, and getting, you know, people uh, gravitating towards them and, you know, you sit back and go, wow, you know. But they took a chance uh, on somebody like me and gave me a, and gave me an opportunity. And um, I'll always be thankful for that And uh, because if it wasn't for them doing that for me, I, I wouldn't have the career I have today. Sure. So uh, uh, they really helped an old boy out that never – I never had anything and never expected to have anything, but thanks to those guys, I, I have a career now. So it's been it's been a good one. It sure has. That's wonderful. How uh, how did that come about that you uh, became a member of the Statler Brothers? Well, back in uh, uh, it was Thanksgiving around Thanksgiving, 1981. Uh, I was playing six nights a week, and I had two daytime jobs. I was working myself to death. But I remember I had Thanksgiving off, and I had like the night before Thanksgiving, uh, I, and some friends called me to come jam with them up at a uh, place called Wintergreen up in Virginia, a ski resort up there. They were jamming and asked me to come up and sit in with them. And of all things, I said, yeah, you know, I'm not going to take the night off. I'm just going to go up and play music again because I loved it so much. Uh-huh. And, <clears throat> and I didn't know it, but Lou DeWitt was there that night, and I got to meet Lou. And, uh, of course, a lot of people know that he suffered from Crohn's disease, and I, I didn't really know it at the time. But um, he, uh, we met each other that night, and he heard me sing, and I got to sing with him a little bit. And, and uh, we talked, and, and he said he really liked my singing. And I thought, well, I got to meet one of my heroes, but I'll probably never hear from him again. And then it was right after Christmas, to so make a long story short, uh, right after Christmas I get a call to come over and talk to the brothers and uh, because Lou was going to have to take some time off for about six months and uh, be off and have his surgery for his Crohn's disease and and so they needed someone to fill in and I was the first name out of his mouth and uh, wow. I was the first one to walk in the door to talk to him and then they went to Nashville to audition uh, some more uh, singers and so they came down here, and that took about about a week and a half, I guess, and then they called me again and said they wanted me to fly to Nashville to record with them just to see what it sounded like. And so I was the first one in the door in Virginia, and I was the last one in the door in uh, Nashville. So uh, they And then they hired me, and it was temporary. And uh, so I was there for about uh, until July. And then Lou came back for about a week, and then he decided that he didn't think he could take the road as much as they wanted to work the road. So he asked me if I wanted to do it full time. If I, he said, if you wanted the job, yours. So I said, you know, I'd be a fool to turn this down. And so uh, it turned into a 21-year career for me. Lou passed away back in 1990 from the, uh, you know, uh, complications of Crohn's disease. Mm-hmm. And uh, I miss him. Because, uh, well, what a talented guy he was. And um, what a lot of people don't know, realize, of course, he wrote Flowers on the Wall. And he also was one of the greatest guitar players that I had ever heard. And uh, But uh, he has been missed and will continue to be missed by all of us, for sure. Well, it was meant to be for you to be in the Statler Brothers, and you obviously had his blessing, and that's uh, that should mean a lot, I would think. Well, I think that's probably the reason it worked like it did, because people knew the situation, and they also knew that Lou, you know, kind of picked me, you know, to to be there. And so uh, Lou, was, Lou was a great guy, and he was great to me, and I'll never forget him for... Uh, all that he did and all the nice things he said about me and uh, for just uh, for all that he did for me. I'll never forget him for that. That's great. You know what? That's so good to hear. I, I absolutely think that's wonderful. 
Well, you, uh, I wanted to ask you about your album, uh, I Believe. You uh, re-released that with more tracks on it. Is that right? I re-released it with a song called Country Sunday on there, uh, which was a song that um, um, I loved. I, I didn't write the song, but um, I heard a guy, a friend of mine down here named Bart Butler, wrote the song. And it had been sitting on somebody's desk for like 15 years, and I was like... And I heard it, and I said, you know, that song is like my, almost like the way I grew up. And um, so I recorded it, and I put it on my first gospel album, and then I was signed by um, a label called Song Garden, which was a gospel label, and they thought the song sounded too country, so they they wanted to take it off. And uh, so I said, well, okay, we'll take it off, but I'll just save it for another another album later on down the road. And so uh, we we took it off, but then uh, as time went on, uh, I bought the the whole project back from from the song garden and took it over myself. And so then I just took the song and put it back on the album and then re-released it uh, because that song accidentally somehow got on a Clear Channel station and start and it got to be a more the most requested song on the station i was gonna say i've i've heard that song many times in fact we played it and i would yeah i would think i can't imagine somebody would want to take that off an album yeah and so uh i said you know if it got that kind of attention that song deserves to be on an album so i i put it back on this album and uh it was amazing because the the station got fined because uh i wasn't a like a on a major label at the time and the station got fined for playing me. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the beauty yeah. of internet radio. We don't have to worry about that now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was funny because the Clear Channel State, they called me and said, man, we we just got a big fine because we playing your song. And I said, well, they, they don't, don't worry about it. I said, but I appreciate you playing it because you sold a lot of records for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, tell me about your song, More Than a Man on the Wall, or excuse me, More Than a Name on the Wall. More than name on the wall. Uh, I was writing with a. I had a co-write set up with a friend of mine named John Rimmel, and it's, he's out of Sharksville, Virginia, and a good friend of mine that uh, kind of picked together with a long time ago. But we uh, uh, were going to get together. We needed some ideas for songs. Well, I had at that time I uh, uh, was you know we were hearing a lot about the. Uh, the, the Vietnam Memorial up in, in D.C. And it kind of, it was controversial at first, you know, like they were talking about it and about how uh, how it was designed and how it looked, you know, and I said, well, you know, I need to go up there and just see it for myself, just to see what's going, you know, what the story's all about. So I made a trip up to Washington, D.C. We went up there and, and uh, I walked around the place and saw the memorials there and everything and then I on the hill and saw the Vietnam Memorial for the first time and and when you see it I mean it would it really hit me it 60,000 names first of all one stacked on top of the other and it just and you realize how many people gave their lives and, and that not only that war but and so many others but um, I saw people that were coming there, and I listened. I stood there, and I listened to some of the stories. Um, you know, I've heard, I saw mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters and you know, husbands and wives, sons and daughters and family members coming there to to pay their respects. And and I just kind of listened to some of the stories and there and and, and look, watched them as as we all looked. You look into that wall, and you really feel like someone's looking back and then so immediately my thoughts went to the other side looking back and that was a perspective I wrote that song from when it says when it says I saw her from a distance as she walked up to the wall it wasn't from my perspective but to me it was like from the other side looking that see it and then they were hearing the stories of these people that were coming uh, uh, that were their loved ones or uh, family members or whatever that were coming there to to remember them and uh, and and so it was written from that perspective and um, and it really struck a chord 
with veterans um, all over the world. Um, and, uh, you know, every time you do that song, someone will come up and share a story. And the ones that are, the ones that really get me are the ones that come up and they have the tears coming down and they cannot get a word out. And there are a lot of them that just can't say anything. And they'll just, the tears will come out and they'll stick their hand out, shake your hand, and can't say a word. I'll, I'll say, I, I understand, and, uh, and I'm thankful, and, I'm all, and I always say, you know, welcome home, and thank you for all you've done for us. It's the least I can do. That's wonderful. You have written some of the most prolific and you know, just heart-touching songs, and, and I, I really think as a songwriter, sometimes you get underrated by a lot of people because you're right up there with the very best. You've written some of the most beautiful and wonderful songs in country music history, and I applaud you for that. Thank you. I appreciate you saying that. Thank you very much. I, I, I say I don't go in and write every day, but I feel like <clears throat> I do have a. It's it's my job as a songwriter to um, to to deliver. It's like it's almost like it doesn't have. It's not me that's writing the song. It's like it's coming from a higher power, and I and I do believe it is. But I also believe it's 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 like God has little messages that He wants to get to to people, and and uh, <clears throat> it's my job to deliver that message. And uh, and and I feel like it, I sit down and I I, I I try to write a song about a tree or whatever, and I can't do it. It's just like it's almost got to be a divine intervention to me. Like God says here, this is this is what I want you to to say, and and then He has people that come up and respond to that message that lets me know that they got the message that God wanted them to get, and uh, because I made a promise to myself, but mostly to God that whatever I did in my life and my songwriting, it would be to do His work as far as getting a positive message out there to people that, hey, no matter what happens in life, you know, whether you, it's a death, you lose a loved one, a divorce, you lose a job that's very important to you, uh, that God will always provide a way for you to get through that if you're willing to reach out. It's like I said, when one door closes, uh, he'll provide another door, but it's up to us to reach out and grab the knob and open it and walk through it. To, to take the effort to do it. You can't just sit there because he provided the door. You can't just sit there and not go through it. You have to go through it. And so that's what my songs to me are about, about going through what you have to go through to get to the next door and open it. Well said, and I think that applies. I think that applies <laughs> to life in general. Yeah. That's great. So, um, well, I, got to... I feel like that's my job, you know. Well, you're doing it wonderfully, and, I, and, and uh, God has blessed you, and it, it's fabulous, absolutely fabulous. You, you're, you've got the, uh, you know, the vocals, the musicianship, and the songwriting skills. It's absolutely wonderful. God bless you for that. Thanks, Scott. I do appreciate it, buddy. Well, I know I, I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but I wanted to talk about the Buddy Holly tribute, the David Frizzell and Friends. Uh, David was on our show last, uh, last summer. And uh, we debuted the album, and what a fun album, what an entertaining album, and, and uh, informative, too. And, and it sounds like you guys had a lot of fun with that. You know, we had a lot of fun doing it, and the thing of it was, when we sat down and listened to it, uh, I, and he asked me to do it, I said, man, I don't, I, I can't sing like Buddy Holly. He said, well, don't worry about that. He said, sing like, do Jimmy Fortune. He said, we, do, we don't want it, nobody can do Buddy Holly. Buddy Holly's been done. And he was Buddy Holly. Nobody's going to get out there. We don't want just just we want to do take the words, the songs, the music, and just do a tribute to him, and just kind of bring it back up and and uh, it's like tilling the soil of of, of all over again of of uh, uh, making a whole new garden, so to speak, uh, of Buddy Holly, and uh, and only it's us paying tribute to him and his songs and his life. I mean, three-year career, holy smoke, look what he got done in three years. Holy smoke. It was unbelievable. But 
uh, being with people like David Frizzell, uh, Helen Cornelius was in on it, T. Graham Brown, um, and then uh, Sonny Curtis, which was one of the original crickets, uh, and then Merle Haggard uh, being involved in it as well. Uh, all the musicians. Um, I got my hats off to David Frizzell. I mean, he put together uh, a bunch of great musicians and uh, and singers that, that made it so hard. Like I said, it came from the heart. The whole thing did because uh, we all uh, loved and respected Buddy Holly and, uh, and the uh, Buddy Holly Educational Foundation, which is what the proceeds go to, uh, has been uh, just a, a wonderful um, experience, you know, for me. And I'm, I'm just glad I got to do it. I'm glad they asked me to do it. But like I said, we didn't we didn't set out to to like flip anybody's lid on the singing as far as this that and the other you know goes. And but it, we just wanted to do a uh, a beautiful uh, CD and video that you could sit down and listen to and hear some of the stories and relax to it and and learn something more that you didn't know about Buddy Holly. And I learned a lot, and it uh, <clears throat> I liked the little uh, segments that David did in between the songs, you know, talking about the song and everything. And um, when I had him on the show, he had sent me the the uh, songs without that, and he said, "Well, most stations they're gonna, you know, they'll just play the song." And I said, "No, I want to leave I want to leave the the introduction in there. It's part of the history. It's, it should be heard." I think you're right. I think <coughs> what made it so special to me was David's good at that. I mean, and, uh, he. Uh, you know, did that you know tribute album you know to Lefty and and uh, and his uh, and that book he's got a book and it's also a uh, a, uh, a, a CD uh, on it where you can just listen to it and the way David does it is uh, it's incredible because it's his love and respect for who he's doing it about you know and I think that's why it comes off so well and to me I, I'm like you it. When people, I do songwriter nights and everything, and people want to hear about the song, and they want to hear the story behind the song, and all of a sudden when they hear it, it's like, oh, I, I just learned something I didn't know, you know? Absolutely. So I think it's important that you tell those stories, and uh, and it just adds a whole new, new dimension to music, I think. Well, it helps, you know, it helps bring it, uh, you know, pay it forward, too, for a new generation. It gives them a chance to learn about it and go back and discover it on their own. Right, right. But a great um, a great project, and we, uh, of course, we play that very often. And you did a great job on Old Boy. I love that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was fun to do, man. It really was. Um, you, you and David work yeah. very well together. You guys have done a lot of things together, and you guys sing well together, and, and uh, he, he speaks very highly of you as well, and... And uh, it's always great when you guys get a chance to work together. Well, he's a good friend, and that family, what a heritage the Frizzell family has and that needs to be carried on. And uh, David did a good job of uh, of doing that. Absolutely, he has. And he's... You know, I feel like, you know, long after we're gone, like you said, you know, some of these kids will be sitting around saying, hey, listen to this. This is pretty cool. They have been, uh, uh, he and Joe have been so nice to us, and uh, I've, had a chance to meet him a couple times, and like I said, he was on the show, and um, just good people. But uh, Yes, they are. They are. You're right. I want to let everybody know you can go to jimmyfortune.com. Uh, your music is available there, your albums, and as well as the uh, uh, Remember Me, Buddy Holly tribute. You can get that there. And you've got all your tour dates, and all your information is there. And, of course, uh, Amazon.com, iTunes, and all the usual uh, places on uh, the Internet. And... Uh, uh, Cracker Barrel carries uh, some of your gospel music I've seen, and so mm -hmm. plenty of stuff out there to get by Jimmy Fortune, and I highly recommend yeah. every single. I'll every... have a new uh, CD coming out, um, and it's probably sh should be out in August. Oh, great! Tell me a little bit Before, about that. Uh, be, it's called Hits and Hymns. It'll be on. Uh, I just signed a deal deal with uh, uh, Bill Gaither Group, so uh, it'll have songs like Elizabeth. We record, re recorded Elizabeth. My only, my, I mean, too much on my heart. Uh, More than name on a wall. And uh, there's a song called "I Believe," which is the title track to my gospel CD. We we did it more. It's a more of an acoustic sounding album. And like I said, it's be called "Hits and Hymns." We'll have, it'll have songs like "Amazing Grace," "How Great Thou Art," um, 
uh, Sweet By and By, uh, Precious Memories, Victory in Jesus, um, and also went back and recorded an old Irish tune uh, called Old Danny Boy. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and I've always been asked to do that song, and we did it. We did it kind of a Celtic, Irish sounding type thing. Uh, ben Isaacs uh, is a producing it uh, of the Isaacs. Nice. And uh, he did. He is doing a wonderful job. Um, and it will be also in. Uh, it'll be in Cracker Barrels. It'll be in Targets uh, and all Christian bookstores around the world. Um, so it'll be a pretty big project. Big push on this project as well. Um, so uh, it'll be a DVD uh, video type thing. Uh, along with the CD. So. Oh, that's great. Well, we'll be looking. Fifteen songs, as a matter of fact. So, wow. Uh, be looking for that. We'll be uh, we'll be looking for that, and I'll make sure we get it and get it uh, get it on the air when it comes out for sure. Ab- absolutely. Sounds like one to look forward to. Um, the so- when you did uh, "How Great Thou Art," I think it was on your "I Believe" album. Man, I'll tell mm-hmm. you what, that was one. Of the- well, it was. It was the hands down the best version I've ever heard of that song. It was incredible. Thank you. Goosebumps. Thank you very much. Goosebumps, oh. man. There, there are two gospel songs that, that struck me like that. And the first time that I heard uh, heard you do How Great Thou Art was one of those times. And uh, the other one is, of, uh, of course, Elvis Presley. Mm-hmm. And, uh, man. You know, I get people walk up and, and say that a lot. They said, you know what? we Our favorite has been always been Elvis. But they said, buddy, you're coming pretty daggone close. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, that that one just really struck me, and uh, Elvis's uh, "Peace in the Valley" I think is uh, the one that oh, really yeah. gets me by him. But "How Great Thou Art" by Jimmy Fortune, I guarantee you it'll just make the hair stand right up on your neck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do appreciate you saying that. Like I said, I'm I'm very thankful. I'm just a thankful person, and God has continued to be really good to me, and um, and people have have shown their love and appreciation to me over the years and um and I'm just thankful to the good Lord and I'm thankful to those people for supporting me people like you for all you've done for us well we're happy to do it and you know what just from our talk here today you are a, a genuinely nice man and uh I think uh, the folks that are going to hear this interview you've made more fans out there just by what we've said today we genuinely love them. I always say, if you don't love people and you're in this business, you're in the wrong business. <laughs> Amen to that. Amen to that. Well, lots of tour dates on JimmyFortune.com and uh, a Waterfest Cruise with Daly and Vincent coming up in 2016. A uh, new album coming out this August. So uh, Jimmy Fortune is uh, staying busy. <laughs> That's right. And well, fortunes in music. <laughs> keep on doing it. Keep on doing it. That's what I say. Keep on picking. Well, it has been an honor to have you on the show, and uh, thank you so much for taking the time. God bless you, and we look forward to hearing more new music from you, and uh, we'll hopefully get to see you on the road sometime. Thank you, Scott. God bless you. Appreciate you, buddy. All right. That is Jimmy Fortune here on My Kind of Country on Fish Creek Radio.